Good evening and welcome to Would I Lie to You, the show where dishonesty is sometimes the best policy. On Lee Mack's team tonight, a comedian who, as a student, started a band called Dog Dirt. Sadly, no one picked them up. It's Bob Mortimer. <laughs> And a presenter who once appeared on Radio 1's Innuendo Bingo. Yes, if you want an innuendo, this lady will give you one. It's Alice Levine. <laughs> and on David Mitchell's team tonight, a celebrated actor whose career started on Coronation Street back in 1982. I've never watched Corrie, so please, no spoilers. It's Sue Johnston. <laughs> And he's the furniture restoration expert who says he loves nothing more than getting his hands on a tired old antique. I'll be keeping my distance. From the repair shop, it's Jay Blades! <laughs> so, to round one, home truths where our panellists read out a statement from the card in front of them. To make things harder, they've never seen the card before, they've no idea what they'll be faced with. It's up to the opposing team to sort the fact from the fiction. Alice, you're first tonight. OK. I once fled a swimming pool after accidentally assaulting an old man. Right. Well, David, <laughs> so how did you accidentally assault the old man? Um, so we were both in the pool, in the water, mm -hmm. and I had heard that it was rude to kind of overtake people, like go round people. So I decided to undertake him and go underneath him. Because I thought if you go round, okay. it's sort of <laughs> passive-aggressive. You've got to be a very good swimmer to go under well, and build up speed well, and come up the other side. Yes, that was, that was the issue. So uh, yeah. I think I went too deep and then I misjudged it and then I sort of came up mid-abdomen. <laughs> so, you know, you know, in like an ice lake, but it was skin, so I was yeah. trying to find a hole in the... You, you surfaced <laughs> underneath him, Look, well, looking well... for a hole. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What did he do? What... He, he wasn't best pleased, Sue. He sort of struggled and then... Drowned. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what his fate was. So how did you assault him then? That's what I'm trying to well, find. Well, as I was trying to find the surface, right. I was ha quite handsy. OK. Right. It sounds like it was a hit and swim. <laughs> you, just, you just went. An old man's undercarriage can hang very low. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if there was, like, an en entanglement. <laughs> Why were you so convinced that you thought it would be rude to swim round him, but you thought if you swam underneath him, well, he so... wouldn't notice so... when someone just appeared in front of him? <laughs> He's going to know that he has in some way been overtaken or undertaken, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. You're right. I think in his heart he would have known. Yeah. Um... In his already weak, <laughs> aged yeah. heart. <laughs> what happened to you when you got out? Well, I just looked back and he was still floundering and I just went and got changed. <laughs> what are you thinking, Sue? Mm. I, I think it's a lie because I think Alice is too kind a person. I don't think she'd have left him floundering in the pool. Right. So basically there's a lot riding on this now, isn't there, Sue? <laughs> yeah. Because if it's true, it turns out she's a really horrible person. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Jay? I was going to say the same thing as Sue. I don't think you're that nasty to just leave a guy. <laughs> What do you think, David? <laughs> well, I tell you what is plausible about the details, the specifics, this thing about undertaking rather than overtaking. That's either been very cleverly and recently invented yeah. or it's true. Oh. You're very bold. Normally, if, if yeah. two teammates uh, are going one way, you crumble instantly. <laughs> <laughs> Go with them. No, I'm very happy to be outvoted. I just want to be able to say, I told you so. <laughs> <laughs> So you're going to say? We'll say lie. It's lovely leadership. OK. You're saying it's a lie. Yeah. Alice, was it the truth or were you telling a lie? Sue's going to hate me. It's no. true. <laughs> <laughs> Jade, you're next. Possession. Ah, right, there's a box just there. <gasps> so lift up the box, place the item that's in there on the desk and then read the card. This lives in my workshop, and I watered it every day for a month before someone pointed out that it was plastic. <laughs> OK, right. Please, team. Where did you get it? 
Um, it was a gift. Someone gave it to me for a, a yeah, cheer. Yeah, I know what a gift is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shop, yeah. shop. <laughs> <laughs> Who gave it to you? A person whose chair I did up, they gave me the flower. You're welcome to inspect it yourself. Can we have a look at it? Your should, keen yeah. observation. Should we go and get it? I don't want to get it, but we should. <laughs> <laughs> can, 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 I'm happy to wheel you over there because I've got casters on it. It looks heavy. Here we are. Careful, Rob. <laughs> 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 it's very Which makes light. I think you'd know it was um, not with soil. Yeah. What is that stuff? Yeah, it's like a. F that looks quite real, that stuff. The, at the mossy bottom. stuff, yeah. I don't feel real to you. It's not going to smell. It's not real. <laughs> <laughs> Have you not been listening? <laughs> Maybe it is. <laughs> what would happen if you put water in it, Lee? It's not real. <laughs> no, but what would. The, I wonder if the water would penetrate. Put it on this top of that. Let's find out. <laughs> Let's find out. <laughs> Right, well, it is absorbing. Oh, it does absorb it. It absorbs. It absorbs. Oh, no, no, no. Well, didn't no, it? But it did much. absorb. It does absorb quite a lot of water, doesn't it? You did it for a month? About a month, yeah. For how, what, how often? Probably about three times a week. Three I times think. a week? You gave three it 12 waterings. How much water did you put in? Um, only like a, an egg cup. You <laughs> filled the egg cup with water? Not fill, I, didn't, I didn't say I filled it. Do you know, Rob, it's only the last 30 seconds I've realised you've still been stood there. <laughs> just, just wait for Still, because I find this a bit. You know, just... about, you know about the restraining order. We came <laughs> Always five metres away. Just five <laughs> metres away. Do you want it back, Rob? Yes. 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 Thank you. Very Sorry, much. pardon me. How long has he been holding it? Are you saying 12 times you topped it up with half an egg cup? Almost half an egg cup. Almost half an egg cup. Almost. <laughs> I've got a lot of antiques in my it's workshop. It's an antique it's egg an cup. It's an antique egg cup, yeah. And um, what does it look like? It's um, a little ceramic. <laughs> well, they were very different back then. <laughs> <laughs> before, before the war, eggs were rectangular. <laughs> <laughs> I could have been a dojo egg. Um, so, after the 12 waterings or the month had elapsed, yeah. What made you realise that it was fake? Um, the customer called me back um, just to say she enjoys the chair and stuff like that and how am I getting on with the plant. And I said, oh, I've been watering it, but it hasn't grown. Ah. Did you expect See? it to be a tree after the month? Well, she said it will, it will, it will, um, it will blossom a bit more, is what whoa, she whoa, said. Whoa, 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 whoa. She whoa. said that? <laughs> she what? what? On the phone she said that? No, she said yeah. that while she was there picking up the chair. She so when she gave it to you, yeah. she said it would blossom a bit more. Yes, if I water it. But 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 it's not <laughs> real. <laughs> so you're telling are you telling us that she also didn't know? No, basically, she did tell me that it would blossom if I watered it when she picked up the chair. And then when she called me up and she said she was enjoying the chair, I said I've been watering the plant, but it hasn't blossomed. She started laughing. It was a practical joke she was playing on me. Oh. Bingo! <laughs> So she said to you, ha, 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 and you said, why are you laughing? And yeah. she said... It's plastic. She just started laughing. And her dentures fell out as well at the same time. <laughs> so she had to pick those up and put them back in. Were you on FaceTime? Uh, no, she well, doesn't... How do you know? Yeah. Did you hear a gentle thud? It was more like a wind action. It was more like wind coming through the phone. That's what it was. <laughs> Like she was blowing, she was laughing, but it was like, <laughs> she was just going. <laughs> Bob, what are you thinking? Well, I'm, my instinct, as soon as I held it, it's so light that I wouldn't believe that it had soil in it and was a living thing. Mm, I, I did think it was a little bit more real than I was expecting it yeah. to be. It had a leafy no, it did. texture. It did, yeah. You didn't think it felt real at all, did no, you? No, I feel like I could see it, the seams. Yeah, it's not real. David, are you, do you think it looks real? I yeah, think it, I do looks think it looks very real. <laughs> <laughs> Orchids look like that. Orchids are very I mean, delicate. I would say, to be fair on it, it looks exactly like a real flower. <laughs> <laughs> to the extent that I think that's what it might have been designed to look like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, OK, it's time. What are you going to say? I think it's Tosh. She laughed for an extended period. You're not laughing for an extended period about that, are you? She might have a dull sense of humour. <laughs> <laughs> 95% of what Jay said is a lie. <laughs> then I think it's true. It can't be true. It's got to be a lie. 
OK? <laughs> it's up to your Alice, it's for you. No, it's what? for you. No, I've said... No, I'm not getting involved. Said, <laughs> you said no, I'm not saying anything. <laughs> Don't put it on What me. do you think? I feel... You've, you get invited back, this is my only chance. <laughs> it is... <laughs> it's a lie! It's a lie. You say it's a lie. OK. So, Jay, were you telling the truth or were you telling a lie? I was telling the... A lie. Oh! Our next round is called This Is My, where we bring on a mystery guest who has a close connection to one of our panellists. This week, each of David's team will claim it's them that has the genuine connection to the guest, and it's up to Lee's team to spot who's telling the truth. So please welcome this week's special guest, Francis. <laughs> So, Sue, uh, what is Francis to you? Well, this is Francis, and together we hid a body in a coffin to spook the cast of Brookside. <laughs> Jay, how do you know Francis? So, this is Francis, and we got a speeding ticket together whilst test driving a motorised sofa. <laughs> and finally, David, what's your relationship with Francis? Uh, this is Francis, and he told me to tone it down a bit when I got a tad too bouncy on his bouncy castle. <laughs> Lee's team, where do you want to start? I think we'll start with Sue, The cadaver, we? yeah. First of all, what is Francis's role on Brookside? Francis was the first AD. That was his year of birth. <laughs> <laughs> it stands for assistant director. OK, so was it part of the story, the coffin? Yes, right. it was the death of a very loved character had Which occurred character? before called Damien Grant. Your fictional son? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bring you back memories. <laughs> Damien dying in Brookside. Damien, yeah. yeah. Simon. Simon. Who, who, who? Simon O'Brien. What did you put in the, in the coffin, so a, a body or something? We put Simon in. Well, hang on, wasn't Simon... Dead. No, no, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> well, was, was Simon supposed to be in the episode playing himself no. as a dead body? No. So you would never have seen what was in the coffin in the, no. in the story? Yeah. But you decided to ring up Simon and say, um, you know you're upset because you've been written out of the show. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any chance you could come in unpaid one more time? Yeah, I thought that would be a great idea. <laughs> and so he wasn't meant to be in work that day? No, he'd finished. finished. He'd been he's stabbed. He wasn't, <laughs> he wasn't meant to be in work ever again. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I went to Francis and said, what do you think about um, hiding Simon in the coffin and, you know, freaking everybody but out? But how did you freak people? Because it, the coffin had the lid on. Because he could jump out. <laughs> he could or he did? He did. And who did he scare? Well, he scared most people, but in particular the priest. <laughs> 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 well. So, Sue, when he decided to do the reveal of jumping out... When... Uh, well, he couldn't stay in there very long, but no. we knew he had to Hello, come that out. bloke under the patio was there for about six series. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, so we had a quick rehearsal and then... We go for a take, and during the take, the coffin begins to shake, oh. and this eerie noise comes out of it, and it bursts open, and Simon sits up. What does he say? Uh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> Did he not think to use the traditional boot? It probably doesn't make much difference, does it? No, a, the d thing Apparently the dead action. bodies jumping out of a coffin. People aren't going, what's he going to say? <laughs> <laughs> what did the priest say? That's when I thought we'd gone too far, cos the priest went green and he went... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> At least there was a coffin on hand. <laughs> <laughs> now, what about Jay? Jay, remind us remind again. Remind us, Jay. <laughs> well, this is Francis, and basically we got a um, speeding ticket for driving a motorised sofa. Right, why was this sofa motorised? Um, was it one of your renovations? No, the, the sofa was one of my renovations, but the motor underneath it belonged to Francis. What was he going to do with it, then? I mean... Basically, he takes them around to, like, car um, enthusiast shows right. and just drives them around. So, hang on, what speed were you going? Um, we was doing about 20... I think it was about 23 miles an hour. It was a 20-mile zone. And you got into trouble for it? Yeah, Francis it's... got a ticket. I, I didn't get... What do you into... mean, a ticket? It was the old bill, the police caught Oh, the police it. actually... So it's got yeah. a registration on it? It's got a registration on the front and the back of the of the sofa. Right. Um, on the arms? 
No, not on the arms. No, on the, on the back. You know the arms are famously at the side, not the front and back. <laughs> <laughs> What's the mechanisms for driving this thing? You've got a, a flat bit for your feet, yeah. where the pedals are, and then the steering wheel kind of was on a shaft which con controlled what was underneath the sofa. And I had to do something in the arm where it could open up and then you have the, like, the wing mirror in the back that you could see. <laughs> Sorry, it is this a James Bond worthy. film? <laughs> <laughs> Is open, come up like that. You lift up the arm and then you pull up the wing mirror. Why don't you just have them as permanent fixtures? Because you want it to be a sofa sometimes. Well, you drive it into your lounge when you want <laughs> to see it. <laughs> and can you talk us through the bit where the police pull you over? What, what was he? Was he on yeah, a motorbike? Was, was a motorbike? Oh, no, he was in the kitchen cabinet. <laughs> They were just there. They were just there. The police do just turn up sometimes. Could I see Kevin's hands? <laughs> <laughs> Whose hands? Whose hands? Who's Kevin? It's Francis. <laughs> Could I see the gentleman's hands? Francis. Francis. Francis, would you hold your hands up in front of you, please? There they are. Oh. Are they the hands of a mechanic? Green suede shoes they look and very hands soft, like that. Don't they? Look very mm. tender. They do look. Thank you, Francis. Uh, now then, what about David's story? The Bouncy Castle. Yes. When were you on a Bouncy Castle? Uh, last summer, actually. So what was the occasion that had a Bouncy Castle? The, it wasn't an occasion. It was a place. Where was the place? Inflatable World. No. <laughs> um, it was uh, Blenheim Palace. They have a sort of uh, children's bit. Yeah. And one of the entertainments there is a bouncy castle. But it's a bit awkward, this, because it's happened before to you, David. Were you, were you on your own? Um, <laughs> no. No. Finally, you f remember to bring your child with you to one of these things. <laughs> yes, yeah. OK, so you're with your daughter and, and your wife? Yes. And was it your real wife or your inflatable wife? No. It was my real wife. And you're bouncing on the castle. I didn't um, initially get on the bouncy castle. I was encouraged on by my daughter. Right. And how much was it to go on the bouncy castle? Uh, I can't remember. Have a guess. Uh, I think... <laughs> OK. Uh, See if you're in touch with uh, the real people I out there. I think it was £7,000. <laughs> 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 what about the castle itself? Because I know you're a great fan of yeah. castles, you're a historian. How did the, the structure... Well, I would say it was, it was historically laughable. <laughs> <laughs> There was no, no recognisable keep and curtain wall situation. <laughs> and how did this make you yeah. feel? <laughs> Angry, I'm imagining. No, no, I think you're, you're massively overestimating the extent to which I expected it to be historical. <laughs> I've seen them before. I know... I, in many ways, I don't think it's particularly their aim to say, yes, this is precisely the kind of military architecture that made Edward I such a successful king. I don't think that was even in the minds of the people who designed it, and I'm fine with that. <laughs> So you, went, so you went a bit too far, so did you start off by bouncing normally and then just you just got carried away? I got on the edge, she was sort of in towards the back corner, and I moved towards her... In a bouncing fashion? Well, it, I, I, it turned out... You didn't think out... to just walk over there and start bouncing, because well, you it... thought, I'm a stickler for the rules, I better bounce because it's the bouncing <laughs> castle. I would say that in trying to walk over there, I developed a more than usually bouncy gait. <laughs> <laughs> What happens then? Uh, holding hands a bit. With your daughter. Uh, yeah, and then and then bouncing. Were you then we sort of bounced away from each other. Oh, oh. Yeah. Did you have an and, argument? Uh, <laughs> no, no. Did you bounce away from each other or did she bounce away from you? And you started going, well, of course, this is historically inaccurate, isn't it? I, I did. <laughs> <laughs> bounce away from him! Bounce away from him! <laughs> try and fit a portcullis to this, I said. <laughs> <laughs> Worst is that you don't want to hear from a fully grown man on the bouncy castle. <laughs> <laughs> would, you, would you be willing to give us a demonstration of what you considered normal bouncing and then how it got a little bit out of hand? No, I would not. <laughs> Just the vertical bouncing. There were no star jumps, there were no somersaults, no <laughs> knee jumps. You know, on a trampoline, you jump and you do a knee and then on... Or maybe knee that. Bum, oh, knee maybe that. bum, <laughs> knee bum, knee bum, stand. I is that an ambulance? <laughs> I didn't do knee bum stand. I might have done knee stand. Really? I don't see you doing that. Um, well, uh, you weren't there. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
certainly that didn't. That makes two of you. I certainly <laughs> didn't. <laughs> Right, we need an answer. So, Lee's team is Francis Sue's pranking pal, Jay's sofa speeder, or David's castle custodian? I mean, I've, I've rejected Francis as, the, as a mechanic because of his hands. Right. <laughs> if he's got soft hands, he could work in television because they've never done an honest day's work in their life. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> there was good detail with Jay's. Actually, I don't know if it was quality detail, but there was a lot of it. <laughs> Do you think you... He was full of it, I'll give you that. <laughs> I don't think you can get registration plates Oh, you definitely do. You absolutely do. But you can get Not for a sofa. sofa. No, no. Not f don't <laughs> be thinking you've got to go on, Bob, and go, all right, love, <laughs> leave, leave that to me. We've got to get another place for the sofa. No, only if it's turned into a vehicle do you need to get... You don't have to get headlights no, for a sofa. the DVLA wouldn't issue, issue mirror. them. Yeah, but there, there's... Say, well, apply to DFS, not us. <laughs> <laughs> so are you going for Bouncy Castle? I think David would be uh, reluctant to get on a Bouncy Castle. I don't oh, think that he, I don't dispute. I don't think he's <laughs> kicking I think his... David would be reluctant to just go out of the house. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go with Bob. I think it might be Sue. You think it's going to be Sue? Yeah. Sue! OK. <laughs> we're going yes. with Sue. We're not changing our minds. It's Sue. Sue. It's Sue, yes? Definitely Sue. OK, so, Francis, would you please reveal your true identity? I'm Francis, and together Sue and I yeah! did a body in a coffin on Brookside. <laughs> yes, Francis is Sue's pranking pal. Thank you very much, Francis. <laughs> Which brings us to our final round, Quick Fire Lies, and we start with... <coughs> it's uh, Bob. I once masterminded a daring heist on a campsite tuck shop. <laughs> <laughs> David's team. OK. Uh, where was the campsite? Hexham. <laughs> <laughs> what did you steal? What did you take? I, Jay, my memories of this are, are quite vague. I was only 15. OK. 15. Okay. Yeah. You must still remember what you took. Yes, though, but it's thought. like picking bits of pollen off a mouse's handkerchief. <laughs> Forensic on me. Okay. <laughs> no, so don't start asking him any questions. Yeah, so all right. <laughs> make your decision and move on. <laughs> we just we were invited just, to just believe him. Just tell us what you do remember, Bob. Not not in general about this story. I remember. <laughs> oh, I, I remember the MG. <laughs> they were lovely. The teeth fell out. You remember that, don't you? The teeth fell out. Yeah. You remember of waking wind. up in threshers? <laughs> don't you? Remember that? So it was Hexham. It was yes. awesome. <laughs> um, and what uh, sort of a campsite was it? Tents or caravans? It was no dormitories, wooden. Yeah. It's coming back. Wow. Yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> when you... And um, it was for gifted children for the summer. <laughs> is, is that what they told you, Bob? <laughs> yes. <laughs> the people there, um, interesting people with. Different gifts. gifts. What was what? your gift? And they were allowed to bring a friend. There was. There, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> so there was people who were good at pottery, people good at art, yeah. people who were gifted at fencing. Or um... we're all very curious to know, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> what were you good at? I was there because of my special abilities at football. <laughs> And the camp wasn't just for children who were good at football, it was for children who were good it at was a for wide gift, range of things. Gifted children. Right. right. So you were proposed yeah. by the school or the local authority. <laughs> 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 it was huts in a pine forest, a place where you could canoe, a place where you could pot. Yeah. 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 All boys. All boys in my dorm. Mm. Yeah. Do you remember any of them? I was with... Um, Pork Chops Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> he was called that because he has a very thick layer of fat across his back. <laughs> Pork Chops Johnson. <laughs> because this is a criminal enterprise, I'm not using their real name. Oh, of course, oh, yeah. <laughs> was it Lamb Chop Jenkins? Lamb <laughs> <laughs> Chop Jenkins, he just had a thin bone. <laughs> <laughs> so, there, um, and there was a mole. The mole. The mole. They're the two. They're the two people that I carried out the um, heist with. Why did you decide to do this heist? Well, it was the evening. 
Yeah. And the nights had got, gotten quite long. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a summer time. Winter was drawing in. <laughs> <laughs> for some reason, the gifted children hadn't been picked up. <laughs> they were being left there to fend for themselves. <laughs> See if among their gifts are foraging and surviving the cold. Well, never a better equipped group of people to be abandoned. We, we had archers, potters, fencers, <laughs> footballers. Those are the key things you need. We can sort out the archer in the football, but then we have a civilization. <laughs> so it was evening. Yeah. And there was a tuck shop there. Well, it was one of the huts. What we noticed, right, was that the tuck shop was on a slope, right? So there's an angle created, yeah? It's at an angle, I'm not very good, right? Say if a duck went quack. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, but not, that, not at the angle if it went fox! <laughs> <laughs> so, but about that, yeah. so we had this... So it had a, a, like a, a, an end that was raised, yeah. and they'd filled that in with stones and <laughs> soil. Yeah. So we went down there. Yeah. Oh, what happened? Well, first off, of course, yeah. the mole removed the stones. <laughs> <laughs> and then Paul Chop Johnson. Yeah. yeah. He slid in and with that magnificent back. Yeah. I would have thought he's the last person to be sliding for us. <laughs> the man with the biggest back. Above him is floorboards. Bang! Oh, you mean he used his back to get the floorboards up? Yeah, got one up. Then is that when small head Bob went through? <laughs> <laughs> so he gets in. He gets in. We heard an engine start up, so I gave I gave out the cry, a warning. Whiffle. What? Whiffle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go, go, go. Right. We went. Yeah, so you us. heard somebody. So did you get anything? Yes. yes. What, yeah. did get? what did you what get? Did you get? A box of cereal. One packet of cereal. What did you do with it after? Well, we ate it in the dorm with, with, with everyone in the dorm. Oh, with everybody in the dorm. Yeah. Did you eat, okay. eat it dry? Yes. Well, well, we put a bit of urine on it. Then. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. <laughs> what do you think, David? <laughs> My instinct is it's not true. Mm. But... It could be true. Yeah. I mean, it's Bob. <laughs> I, I don't think it happened. So you think lie. it's a lie? I'm going to go with Sue. I like the story, but I think it's a lie. I, I think we're going to go lie. You're going to say lie? Br you know, I'm braced. <laughs> I'm braced for an odd experience. <laughs> so, Bob, was it the truth or was it a lie? I was telling the truth. <laughs> That noise signals time is up. It's the end of the show. I can reveal that Lee's team have won by four points to nil. <laughs> Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Good night. There's some festive fibbing going on with the Christmas special Boxing Day at 9.30. And Lee Max back with his shiny balls on Christmas Eve with a not-going-out seasonal special here on BBC One at 10. Well, over on BBC Two now, Dara O'Brien and Hugh Dennis look back at a momentous 2019 with a special Mock the Week. <laughs>